Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel. In this video today, guys, we're going to be looking at AC Milan again as they are continuing on their march towards their first Scudetto, the first Serie A title at the club for only eternity. I think it's like 10 years. Um, with a very convincing 3-1 win at the weekend away to Hellas Verona, who, as regular viewers of the content will know, I'm actually a big fan of this year, how they've been playing. We'll be looking at that. Sandro Tonali, Rafael Leal, the standout candidates, as well as some of the transfer stuff that AC Milan have went quiet on over the last month. It feels like a lot of their attention is focused on the pitch and it's just get the job done, win the title, get Champions League and then let's start signing off on some of these transfers. So we'll be talking about the developments we've had with that since last time we looked at Milan. At any point in the video today, guys, if you do laugh, you learn, you like something or whatever, please do like and subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. If you could hit the subscribe button, I do daily global football content, everything from wonder kids and rising star managers to fantasy football and watch alongs. That will also automatically enter you into my April giveaway. A rare new season edition MLS Cup champion Anton Tinnerholm and two limited goalkeepers. If you want to stick around to the end of the video, we'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Now, over the last 15 games since we last seen AC Milan, they've been on an amazing run. They've drawn twice in the league with Bologna and Torino, nil-nil affairs. And it got really nervy in the title race there, but now they are two points ahead with two games to go. And with the last two games, they've got Atalanta, which will be very tough. They've got it all to play for, for their own European aspirations for next season. And the last game should be, for Sassuolo, a dead rubber for them, certainly. Um, so they will feel that their destiny is probably in their own hands at this stage and as long as they get a positive result against Atalanta they can go into the last game of the season full of confidence but all eyes will be on that game and I believe they'll be going full strength and I think it'll be very similar to this team that we did see play Verona maybe Krunic comes out maybe Brahim Diaz comes back in you know it seems like to, it seems like Pioli's got infinite patience for Brahim Diaz but he's just been so terrible in Serie A like I just can't take him seriously I need to see him in a different team Toronto. Salamakers, like, I quite rate this guy, but he's not amazing. Um, Junior Messias, like, it'd be nice to see a card for him come out. But, you know, the, the team's nice balanced now. And, you know, the thing about AC Milan as well is that they've been active in the transfer window. It feels like they've went quiet on this last, like, kind of stretch of matches because they're just focused on get the title one, then we can deal with transfer business later. But Renato Sanchez feels like he's going to be signing for AC Milan, and I think he really improves this midfield in a massive way. I think Divock Origi coming in from Liverpool, I think him being a guaranteed starter for this kind of team, and especially when you really take at surface level with full sincerity Jurgen Klopp's opinion of Divock Origi I think this could be like a game buster it could be a real cheat code transfer that could pay off for AC Milan because if he comes in and replaces Giroud and Ibrahimovic in essence in terms of what he does on the pitch and his output etc that is amazing you know with the form that Leal and Tonali have shown especially over the last month has been phenomenal we need to see a right wing solution there I'd like to see a Guedes Berardi's heavily linked who would you like to see in right wing in terms of number 10 as well there's still a huge question mark as who's going to play there as well maybe it's Renato Sanchez and Benacer comes in next to Tonali but I think there's a high chance that Renato Sanchez will play next to Tonali and the number 10 search will go on but probably what could become one of the biggest transfers they pull off is Sven Botman, you know, when you look at the back four here, you know, it looks amazing. Kalulu and Tomori, Theo Hernandez on one side, Calabria is like Mr. AC Milan at right back. But Sven Botman potentially coming into this defence, into the Champions League next year, would be a massive move for AC Milan, a real statement of intent. And then it really does answer, it does really give them a lot of good problems at the back. Maybe he's a future replacement. Maybe they expect to sell Tomori in the summer. I'm not too sure. But I was joined by a friend of the channel, Jer Jeremy Magan, from the Breaking the Lines podcast to discuss the possibility and the influence of a Sven Botman transfer to AC Milan. Look, it, he's, been, he's been linked to so many teams the past year and a half, right? As soon as yeah. he had signed for, for Lille, he hadn't played a game. Uh, already people were saying, oh, he's, going, he's actually going to Tottenham. Uh, and so we were expecting, you know, Newcastle, maybe Man United and then Man United got Varane last year. Uh, and so there was a lot of chat that he was leaving Lille. I thought he was going to England. They got him, like Lille got him for, I think, 8 million from, from Ajax. Uh, and yeah. that was a, a pure steal. Um, he's performed really well last year. He's not stranger to Lille being a uh, French champion last year. This year is probably one of the only ones who's actually at the level that you expect from Lille. I think if you take off Sven Botman and Renato Sanchez from Lille, it becomes just an average team of, of the middle of Liga with those two players. We are seeing yep. a bit more talent. I'm not surprised to see any team going on him. 
Milan going for Sven Bergman? I don't know. They have they already have some talented young defenders, uh, and they're already basing their defense on young players. So a guy like Bergman, who's been playing since he started his professional career with older defenders next to him. It looks like if he goes to Milan, he's going to be asked to maybe be the leader of that defense. Uh, we don't know yet yeah. if he's got that. He's played next to Fonte. When he was in Ajax, he had Dali Blind not too far. Um, it, it's going to be something new for him. I think if he goes to Milan, it's going to be a challenge. He's, you know, he's tall, strong, fast, left-footed, uh, which is something that, you know, coaches are looking for uh, in defender, having a left-footed, right-footed this day and age. Yeah. Very good at the build-up, um, you know, not one to, to shy away from going up for the corner kicks. So, so good, great piece of business for Milan if he goes there. Uh, if if it doesn't happen with Milan, you know, he'll be Chelsea, United, City, Newcastle. Team. Somebody is going to get him. Yeah, because the, the first thing that popped into my head when I seen the report from Fabrizio Romano earlier today, um, the 5th of April, was him and Magic Mike are getting back together. You know, the defence that won the That's league true. early on. And then I was thinking even more, and I was like, hold on a minute, are AC Milan not going to be signing Renato Sanchez as well, apparently? You know, are they maybe just seeing that Lille winning, league winning team that just ripped the spine out of it? Magnan, Botman and Sanchez. And, and Milan has been on that sort of like new st- Style of rebuilding the club and doing it the smart way. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Menia even said something. You know, like, oh, we have a great defense. You, you do you know a great defender? I know one, Sven. <laughs> uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, they must have been like, wow, you were great in Liga and now you're amazing in Serie. A. How did you get there? It was it was all Sven. Uh, it's, so, all Sven <laughs> it's all Sven Botman. Get him in. Uh, so, so there, there might be something like this, and and you know, there's no, there's no secret. You know, you, you, you coach. Course. You know what it is. Uh, yeah. Find two players who get along uh, next to each other. Why would you break that partnership? You know, if it played well in France, it played well in in Milan. It'll probably make many happy to see some homecoming to him. He'll, he'll make it easier for Botman to actually adapt uh, to a new club to know the goalkeeper behind him. Um, so, so it looks like a good, good piece of business all around. I was very surprised that. Um, you know, Romano said said that because I really didn't expect him to go to Italy. Uh, but it it, it makes sense. It's consistent with what Milan has been doing, uh, and he's he's a great talent. So I'm sure he'll he'll be one of the starters very quickly. Yeah, I think that the only question I've got around the Milan defense, if Botman does plug into, it, is everyone's been t- telling me for the last six weeks how amazing Pierre Kalulu looks. You know, so him and Tamori, I, I, I've. I've watched a lot of AC Milan. I'm not as up to speed on Kalulu as as much as some of the other players because I'm watching, you know, some mainly my rare cards when I'm watching AC Milan. Kalulu, do you think he's got the capacity? I know Tamori does, but do you think Kalulu's got the capacity to play right back? Right back, I don't know. I, I think he's yeah. definitely uh, a great a great centre back. Maybe yeah. if they go to a back three, maybe it's a great back three there. Uh, but, yeah, because what I'm thinking who... is like if if they maybe had like Tamori or Kalulu. Like right back, kinda the other one there, Botman, and then Tio Hernandez. Because as we know, Tio is up here anyway. So then another three can just shift in. You've got Sven Botman with that left foot. You've got some right foots over here. So it might be a four that starts off as, but as the game actually happens, maybe it's a wee shift into a three. Yeah, that that, like, that actually makes sense. It's what a lot of coaches are playing these days, right? Offensively, it becomes a three-five-two, and defensively, you go back to a four-four-two. Um, yeah. you, you know, Kalulu is, is more of a centre back. But okay. we've seen that in the French national team. We've seen that in a lot of teams that do put a centre back on, <laughs> onto a right back. Oh, yeah, right. That onto a right back because then you can play him uh, defensively and you don't have to open yourself on both sides. Um, yeah. Kalulu is is also you know he's young. Um, he wasn't even playing in Lyon and then he goes to Milan and then he plays in uh, in Serie A straight away and he performs. Uh, so maybe there's also a bit of for, from Milan point of view. There's also a bit of insurance. Get another yeah. good defender behind there. They're going to be uh, qualifying for Europe next year, um, so they probably also want to be able to perform on every single uh, in every single competition. Um, so it makes sense to strengthen that part of the pitch. You never know when there's an injury, etc. You might as well have three defenders that are as good at each other to be able to rest um, d- during weekdays, etc. So, so, so it makes sense to to add more talent than than what they already have. And and you know, I think every other week I also read that Tomori. Is everybody wants him as well, so so maybe Milan is wondering yeah. if they can actually keep him. 
Um, but uh, but yeah, it, I Over feel forward. like Tomori, Botman would be the defense and Kalu would be yeah. the third one. Uh, there's definitely an opportunity for him to play on, as, as a right back. I didn't think about it, but it, it yeah. would make sense for him to play there. He's fast, so... I'm just thinking out loud, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Because, yeah. uh, I've, I've just not seen too much of Kalulu. So I think uh, the couple of games where he has played and really stood out, maybe the couple of matches of AC I've missed this year. So, I mean, I have watched him. It's been a bit of Calabria or, you know, Florenzi will come off the bench. Right back is definitely one of the spots that needs some attention. And I was just a, a, a kind of passing thought I had there. Um, but overall, I think Botman will be a, a, a big success moving there. It seems like you think that as well. Let's see if it actually pans out. But it does feel like if they do get if they do get it over the line, that Manyan Botman, it will feel very similar to Liverpool getting Allison and Van Dijk, you know, because like yeah, Manyan has true. made a, such a huge difference. Um, and everyone thought Donnarumma's leaving, they see Milan are screwed, you know. <laughs> but Manyan has been probably the best keeper in one of the best keepers in Europe this year, quite easily, you know. And Botman, for me, is the biggest centre back out in the open market. You know, like really for for a top team to try and sign somebody that will play for the next five years plus. And I think AC Milan, if they do get over the line, it'll be a huge coup. coup. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Menia. I think the other player, the other keeper who's been up there recently is Mendy. Uh, France yep. is, a, is a farm for amazing goalkeepers and defenders. We're talking about Botman and there's Saliba in Marseille as well, who's going from strength to strength. Um, you know, I think we've seen yep. a lot of great players coming out of Liga and it's great to see them going to those big clubs and actually, um, you know, finding their, their spot and uh, and getting better and better every year. Now, me personally, I can't wait to watch Milan over the next two games. I really hope AC Milan win the Scudetto. I think it's a great romance story for football. I think the way Pioli's got them playing is fantastic. And it's been a real testament to sticking with a manager and sticking with a philosophy and putting the right people above him. It's not just Pioli, but, you know, with Maldini there and the influence that the club now is kind of built around itself with ex-players and, and the like. It feels like they're on a really strong path now, and I can't wait to see how active they're going to be in the transfer market. I cannot wait to see them in the Champions League next year, really giving a good AC Milan account of themselves. It should be very interesting. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below of who could come in at right wing or even number 10 for AC Milan in the summer. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share and retweet and all that good stuff, guys. Stay out of trouble, and I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye bye.